All right, guys, welcome back to the PSU. So I was there deal hunting on Subito, which is the Italian Craigslist or, you know, websites for used uh, stuff. In this case, a used PC. And I saw this ad here pop up. And basically, it's a guy that listed his PC without asking for a price. And he just said, make an offer. Uh, the person who gets the PC has to clean it. The PC has 10 years old and he built it himself. The PC is featuring an i5 2500K, a GTX 1660 Ti, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a Corsair water cooler 120ml1, nice power supply, and even an SSD. So I offered him 50 bucks and I said, 50 bucks, you bring it to me, I will get it instantly, no problem. Um, and he agreed. So let's go get the PC, guys. Today's video sponsor is Hookies, where you can buy Windows 10 and 11 Pro keys for just $15 with discount code WP25. With the same discount code, you can also buy Microsoft Office for just $50, legit keys. Now, especially if you're selling PCs, you surely cannot go around with that activate your Windows logo there. So you can just go on the website, input their input the discount code, and then get the key going to Windows and activate it properly to have it working. Thank you for your time. So we actually got the PC. Here it is. And now let's open it up and see what it looks like. Well, it's pretty dusty. I can assure you guys, um, it's definitely dusty. But we have an XFX 250 watt power supply, SSD, hard disk, and then yeah. Well, I think the only solution, well, first we're gonna see if it actually boots up, and then we're gonna wash it and see what happens. Okay, so let's go with the first boot. Now we know that there is no Windows installed in there, so it's just to see if it gets into the BIOS. Maybe, okay, we got a beep. We are seeing the Azure logo, and we are into the BIOS. So as you can see, i5 2500K, um, and then we have 8 gigs in dual channel of DDR3 memory. How about we first install Windows 11, test what the performance looks like as of right now, and then wash it and see what it looks like after. I think, I think it's a good idea. Let's do that. Okay, so now here we are with Windows 11 installed and we're doing a couple of tests to get the baseline now. With CPU-Z we are doing the benchmark and then actually seeing what the temp look like. Let's go right there, bench CPU, okay, very low scores, especially for today's standards. But again, it's a 10 year old CPU, so it's to be expected. Now let's see what the single core does as well. Uh, so far you can see behind here the temperature. You see the single core is still decent uh, in those Intel CPUs. Um, okay, so decent temperature overall as of right now. Now we will do a Cinebench to go as of a middle way and to actually see um, the temps in Cinebench but also the performance I run it for the CPU. Now as it's compiling, let's take a look at the temperatures. Okay, they're still really good actually, better than I was expecting. Uh, at around 52 degrees there we are currently in a 19 degrees ambient environment so that's to be considered it's pretty cold cpu is holding the turbo boost no throttling anywhere okay so the maximum temperature reached was 54 degrees and the cinebench score 450 points now let's go with the actual uh, testing okay so let's run prime 95 and let's see what it does it's quickly climbing uh, it sits now at 60 degrees Let's see if it actually goes higher once temperature is reached. You have to remember, those older CPUs were four cores with no hyper-threading. So they used to be very power efficient actually, with just 80 watts. CPUs running real, really hot is just really a thing of recent times. It hasn't always been like that. So I'm actually really happy to see that we are sitting at around 61 degrees uh, on the hottest core. Now, of course, we, we are running a liquid cooler, so we would have to let it run for a bit more. Uh, but I can say that definitely the throne place is in good condition and the PC is still running properly. So that's good on my side. I think we've seen enough. Um, and now we can actually test for the GPU. Here we are getting ready to water this thing, but first you have to properly discharge it. Now to do so, you just spam the power button and hit the power button on top. But then you also need to actually take out the CMOS battery. Uh, which unfortunately in this case is under the GPU. So we have to go right there. And then I have to put my hands on this thing to unlock it. I should use gloves. 
I really should. Okay. Oh. Okay, and now we take out the Simos battery. Yo, what is this right there? Never seen that. Oh, it's a fan controller. It's an old school Molex powered fan controller, as you can see. That's really interesting. Let me put more pressure in there. So, first of all, we're taking out the actual GPU. Should be just a single screw. And then just need to unlock it from behind right there. It's a bit tricky um, while the PC is wet, actually. So, it's some of the... Okay, and now here is the GPU, which is already really clean, but we will just water it a bit more. Can always be better. Now it's properly done, so we just place it in the sun. Okay, we are taking out all the cables. It's full of cables, so it's gonna take quite a bit, but just get the cables out right there, okay? Get the SATA cables out. There's also like the LCD CD-ROM device. Get the USB 3.0 out. 24 pin, all the fans. It's a ton of fans. It was a really high-end PC, by the way. When it was built um, and you'd be surprised what it can still do once i finished with so ram okay green sticks of low profile ddr3 it has been a while since i saw some of these actually we can place them in the sun as well now at this point i i say we take out the actual radiator because it looks like it would stop us from taking the motherboard out Okay, oh, okay, last one, last one. We got it. Here is our motherboard. Free, that's good. Okay, so now washing stuff doesn't really get rid of the paste, especially if it's as dirty as this one. You need some isopropyl alcohol for that, and even with that, it's, it's really difficult. But, I mean, this is not how it should be looking, but we will manage to get rid of all of it. For sure has happened to you that the screw of the motherboard remains attached to the actual stand of the case. Now, how you take this off is first, you get a screwdriver and you just keep unscrewing it, to get this one out with the screw. Then what you do is you actually put the screwdriver into the screw, and then with the other hand, you grab some pliers, and you put the screwdriver in, and then you just unscrew it, and it will come out successfully. Okay guys, so build update. Uh, basically, um, yeah, we have it running, uh, but if you, if you look at it closely, you will see that it's like a different CPU. It's the I-Have 3970K. And today is the 31st, 31st of October 2012. And basically, this is the actual CPU from the build um, that we deleted. You probably seen the footage, or we we'll put a bit of a clip. But basically, it was soldered. Okay. So what I did actually uh, was I used some uh, some uh, how do you call it? Well, I basically took the solder out. Of here but well let's just say that it didn't go as planned so it should be working because i did not damage the die as you can see it's still intact but i think some metal dust went on the back and so for some reason it's not working as you can see here is the remainder of the solder so i mean there really isn't much that we can do about it honestly probably gonna just throw it away but yeah uh, the build is running though so we had a problem with the dual channel basically i tried a ton of sticks of ram but just this one in single channel works. So I'm trying a beta bias to try and fix it. So hoping that we do not lose power now and break the motherboard. Let's let the update do its thing. Okay, I say it's time to slap the motherboard in. So first thing we do is actually put this thing in and then we slap the actual motherboard in. There we go.
It's now time for the CPU cooler now. It has this very particular design where, where you basically put this thing on top of the fan to prevent the vibration, which I actually think is quite smart. And now the way this thing is actually put together is this goes on top, and this goes this way. You put this guy behind it, and then while you hold it, you have to actually mount it. So it's not the easiest mount, but it's doable. Okay, so I actually managed to mount this thing. I had to swap a couple of screws out, but now it's like really solid, which is what actually matters. So that's good. And now I think, yeah, we can just slap the power supply in and connect all the cables. Okay, so something that I don't really like about those cases is that, well, basically, uh, the hard disk and SSD are both on the front. So this really complicates things in terms of cable management, because you see the cables regardless. In goes the hard disk and in goes the SSD, so they're good. If you flip the, um, those things, you can actually have the connectors on the back side, so it will be perfect for cable management. First of all, I hate those yellow things, so. Oh, so now we have actually quite a big problem. Basically, the 8-pin is behind here. So I will try to plug it without uh, having to dismount everything again. Um, but it's not gonna be easy at all. Okay, for the rest, cable management so far looking nice. And now I'd say, yeah, we have to just put the power supply in. Now it's an old school power supply, so it just goes in the front. Pretty straightforward. Right now, we have the whole PC mounted. It's just a matter of connecting the cables. All right, guys, so here we are after washing everything, after reassembling everything, with the build finally complete. This is what it looks like, and we'll give you maybe a side view as well, because it's covered right now. We still have the GTX 6060 Ti in there, so let's see what the score looks like right now. So I just ran a quick fire strike, and we have 6.5K on the graphics close to 7k on the physics which is actually really good and an overall score of five and a half thousand which is actually good now i also pulled up here cpu z with a cpu benchmark for you guys and it's pretty good considering the cpu is at fully stock and the ram is at stock as well and now i also have had other monitor running the whole time so as you can see maximum temperature on the cpu was 53 degrees and on the gpu of 65 so that's really good actually so guys, now what's left to do is to finally upgrade and make it a 1080p capable gaming PC for today's games. And that's that will be using this card right here. Now you might be wondering, what's this? Well, it's a GTX 780, guys. Asus Direct CO2. The best, one of the best GTX 780 cards. Now, I have already cleaned and repasted completely this card. Thank you. <laughs> And it looks brand new, as you can see by the pictures. So it's just a matter of slapping it inside here, connecting everything, and then try to see how hard we can overclock this thing. I was thinking BIOS modding as well, and we will give some love to the CPU as well. Let's get started. Okay, time to swap the GPUs, and luckily, the power supply has exactly an 8 plus 6, which is exactly what we need. So just take this one out, just slap it there, get the 780 Ti. Now, we have this USB free thing in the middle. We we'll connect it either way. Did a good job. As you can see, the red LED lights up because we don't have the actual eight pins connected. So we just connect it so that she stops screaming, gets green. We connect the other one as well, right here. Green as well, and we're done. All right, guys, so we have some bad news. The card is not actually working. As you can see, we got the typical error message right there. And if we click on it, uh, it actually gives us error 43, which means memory error. And if we open GPU Z, memory is not detected. It gives us zero megabytes of VRAM, uh, which means it's probably a bad memory chip. Reflowing it could help. I've not had much much success with it in the past, but maybe we'll try it. Um, this would need uh, actually professional repair, uh, but it's pretty difficult. I think for the time being, we'll just swap it and just put a GTX 1660 Super in here, um, just to finish up the build. That's of course gonna cost us a little bit, 
uh, around 100 euros actually uh, so it will bring the budget up to 150 euros but it wasn't expected it's just that this guy really doesn't want to work with us apparently which is a shame because they cleaned it properly and stuff uh, but yeah oh it also went black right now yeah, it's it's really having a weird behavior if you have any tips on how to fix it actually let me know down below okay so i mounted the gtx 1660 and i ran a preliminary fire strike as you can see we have 16 and a half k on the graphics uh, again around six and a half k on the physics and a total of close to 12 k now what i will also do is upgrade ram to 16 gigs with higher frequency 1600 megahertz ram and i'm doing this mostly because since we have a 1660 super in there uh, to sell this pc we will need uh, 16 gigs of RAM to list it because unless they are not gonna buy it so we're gonna make the swap and then again overclock it really hard and come back to see the results so let me get to work okay so I'm in the middle of the tuning and so far with the CPU at 4.6 gigahertz we managed to get to 8.5k on physics and we are at 18.5k on graphics with a random just quick overclock so let's keep going guys let's keep going okay so 4.9 gigahertz isn't quite working so far but we will get it guys i promise apparently in a 50 bucks pc with just a 120 millimeters only one cooler you can beat an i5 3600k performance using an i5 3570k performance just by slapping it in overclock to 4.9 gigahertz all right guys here we are with the final fire track results and i will also show you how everything is running so the cpu is actually at 4.9 gigahertz right now and the GPU has this overclock on it. So plus 160 on the core, plus 150 on the memory, everything to the max. And as you can see, here is the 4.9 gigahertz CPU with around 1.45 volts, 1.475 in the BIOS, 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. And again, pretty solid score, guys. Close to 20K in graphics, close, again, 9K in physics, and a very nice combine to show that even in games, it's gonna run really nice. So, I'm happy about it. All right, guys, so here we are at the conclusions. As you can see, I've run quite a few tests and overclocked the PC pretty hard. And what's really surprising is that in the end, the temperature are actually pretty good. Now, of course, for benchmarking purposes, I put it all the way up to 4.9. Now, since I'm probably gonna be selling it, I'm actually gonna set it back to 4.6 because it's where the sweet spot in terms of temperature is. So it's not too loud, it's good in the summer as well. Here in Italy, it gets pretty hot in the summer, so I think it's better to let it down a bit. And of course, the GPU will be sold at stock to the person who buys it, or more likely undervolted, as in my tutorials. I think it's the best way to run it. But those older PCs, a bit of tuning, a bit of overclocking really does help them. So overall, I think for a baseline of 50 bucks, it's pretty good. Unfortunately, since the 780 did not actually work, uh, we had to put a GTX 1660 Super in there, uh, which I'm really sad about, because you see, with the 780, I could have BIOS modeled it, and I could have gotten a pretty close uh, fire strike score, I'd say about 2,000 points off, while keeping the budget at 50 bucks. So this card in here, it's a GTX 1660 Super from Gigabyte. I actually got it for free because basically I upgraded a PC and I got paid for the upgrade, so I kept the card. So technically I got it for free, but we will attribute it uh, a street value of around, around 130 bucks. So in the end, it is a 180 bucks PC if we really wanna be strict with it. And the full final specs are i5 3570K at 4.6 gigahertz, the RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, 1600 megahertz, a 120 gig SSD, one terabyte hard drive, GTX 1660 Super, and it's cooled by that Cooler Master 120 mil cooler. And it actually has those dual fans, it works really nice. The case is cooler master as well it has four led fans looks kind of nice and then of course we have the xfx pro 550 watts power supply which still holds pretty well for the age and the motherboard as well it's a z77 azrock extreme motherboard a very good one it has the clear cmos button on the back and the vrms were really cool during the whole overclocking procedure windows 11 installed uh, spectrum meltdown vulnerability has been disabled so the performance is the maximum it can be and again even in today's games, um, of course, a four-core CPU in some games is not the best, but you can easily play Fortnite Apex Legends, even the new COD Warzone. Uh, it runs pretty well on this PC. So I'm very happy about it. I think I will sell it for around 400 bucks, somewhere around there. But let me know if you would have done anything different and what you would sell it for. And if you liked it, drop a like, drop a sub. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.